Hey there, fellow Homo sapiens and everyone watching. Welcome to the first episode of Intro to Anthropology, where we explore what it means to be human through space and time. I'm your host, Linda, the anthropologist slash librarian, and I'll be guiding you through the fascinating world of cultural anthropology today. And I'll be doing so by breaking it down into easy to consume snack sized bites. Is anyone else hungry? Me too. Let's get started. And yet, in spite of these great differences, we found that all these human beings share many things in common. Each group has built up its own established mode of living together. A network of customs, habits, attitudes, and ways of doing things which it has acquired through the ages. This mode of life is called by the Earth's social scientists the culture of the group. To understand cultural anthropology, First, we have to take a look at the field of anthropology as a whole. Anthropology is the study of humans with the Greek word anthropos, meaning man or human, and logos, meaning thought or reason. It is a very broad discipline, including cultural or social anthropology, biological or physical anthropology, archaeology, and linguistics, at least in North America. Beginning in the 1860s, anthropology came into being as an academic discipline, although the concept existed much earlier. Charles Darwin's publications on the origin of species and the descent of man captured the zeitgeist of the era as fields ranging from anatomy to linguistics intersected and European discovery and colonialism thrived. The concept of evolution was widely welcomed into the social sciences soon after neurosurgeon Paul Broca formed the Société d'Anthropologie de Paris, which met for the first time in 1859. Then, in 1871, a British fellow by the name of Edward Burnett Tyler, considered to be the founder of cultural anthropology, published Primitive Culture, in which he stated, Culture or civilization taken in its wide ethnographic sense, is that complex whole which includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, custom, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by man as a member of society. His unilinear concept of how society evolved from savagery to civilization is thought to be extremely ethnocentric, which means evaluating other peoples and cultures according to the standards of one's own culture, often assuming one's own culture to be superior. However, he did postulate that all humans share a common origin and history. On the other hand, German-born American anthropologist Franz Boas, who is considered the founder of modern anthropology, developed the idea of cultural relativism, which stands in stark contrast to the ethnocentric beliefs that came before. In 1911, Boas published The Mind of Primitive Man, which consisted of his lecture on race and culture. Cultural relativism is a way of looking at culture without judging it based on the standards of one's own culture. Just because something is different from your own cultural practices does not mean it's better or worse. Whether or not something is ethical is completely dependent on that specific culture's norms and practices. In general, cultural anthropologists study how individuals within a common cultural system influence the world around them and how the environment, in turn, influences the individuals. So what is culture then? You can think of culture as W. Penn Hanworker defined it in the construct validity of cultures, as the knowledge people use to live their lives and the way in which they do so. And just to clarify, ethnography is very detailed first-hand written documentation of a specific culture used by anthropologists in their fieldwork. Cultural anthropologists most commonly use a type of research strategy known as participant observation, and in doing so, produce ethnographic works. This methodology is used over a long period of time to get up close and personal with a particular group of people, such as a subculture, a religious sect, or a unique community. Ethnology, in contrast to ethnography, is the comparative study of two or more cultures. Edic and emic perspectives are taken into account when producing ethnographies. An edic view of culture is the perspective of an outsider observing another culture, whereas an emic view of culture is concerned with the insider's perspective. With emic studies, the observer places themselves inside the culture they're studying, 
thus providing a much more in-depth analysis of the culture by narrowing in on the intrinsic cultural distinctions that are meaningful to a particular group. I would be remiss if I did not mention Lewis Henry Morgan in our discussion of cultural anthropology. He's considered another pioneer of American anthropology, developing a knowledge base on kinship, which is a system of social organization based on real or putative family ties and social evolution. He posited that the earliest domestic institution of humans was the matrilineal clan, led by female authority figures. His theory of cultural evolution published in 1877 in Ancient Society or Researches in the Lines of Human Progress from Savagery through Barbarism to Civilization rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Proposed that changes in social organization are due to food production, i.e. hunting, gathering, to settled agriculture, and then finally advanced to agriculture. Once again, the social evolutionary view of culture is not a part of modern anthropology. Okay, so I know you're probably wondering, where are the women anthropologists? Okay, so let's talk about Ruth Benedict and Margaret Mead. Ruth Benedict is considered the first female anthropologist. Most notably, she successfully brought together the fields of anthropology, sociology, and psychology, and viewed them all through a cultural lens. As an assistant of Franz Boas, she subscribed to the concepts of cultural relativism, and as such, her 1934 publication, Patterns of Culture, detailed how learned behavior was the most important aspect of human existence, not race or biology. Benedict mentored American anthropologist Margaret Mead, another very important figure in anthropology. Mead studied aspects of human culture like sexual behavior and sexual development. In her 1928 work, Coming of Age in Samoa, she was the first to explore human development cross-culturally. In the interest of time, I'll just name some other very important anthropologists that you can read more about in your own time. Bronislaw Malinowski, A.R. Radcliffe Brown, Alfred Krober, Eric Wolf, Marshall Sollins, Sidney Mintz, Clifford Geertz, David Schneider, and James Clifford. Modern applications of cultural anthropology are wide-ranging, and anthropologists today participate in various fields of work, while many cultural anthropologists participate in field studies through universities and organizations or work in the academic realm, others have found unique ways to use their anthropological know-how. One notable and fascinating example is that of Genevieve Bell, an Australian anthropologist who studies the intersection of culture and technology. She is the director of the Autonomy Agency and Assurance Institute and a distinguished professor of the Australian National University College of Engineering and Computer Science. The 3A Institute incorporates experts from many fields to examine the problems surrounding artificial intelligence and how it may impact society. She has even worked for Intel Corporation as a cultural anthropologist studying how cultures around the world use technology. Another contemporary anthropologist is Crystal DaCosta, a journalist for Scientific American. She is known for covering topics that bring together anthropological concepts and modern lingo in articles such as 73,000-year-old hashtag as oldest example of abstract art, and why is cooperation so difficult in the workplace? And lastly, David Graeber was a professor of anthropology at the London School of Economics who is best known for his work examining anarchism. He published Fragments of an Anarchist Anthropology and Debt the First 5,000 Years. A controversial figure, he was part of the Occupy Wall Street movement and is considered to be the face of millennial socialist movements. So it seems as though cultural anthropologists have pretty much infiltrated nearly every type of field possible. Okay, so I could go on and on about cultural anthropology and all of its interesting aspects, but if you're interested in learning more about cultural anthropology, Check out these books and resources available through Gwinnett County Public Library or your local library. Social and Cultural Anthropology by John Monaghan and Peter Just. The Meaning of Human Existence by Edward O. Wilson. The Creative Spark by Augustin Fuentes. The Social Leap by William von Hippel. Cultures and Organizations, Intercultural Cooperation and Its Importance for Survival by Geert Hofstede, Geert Jan Hallstede and Michael Minkoff, Know-It-All Anthropology by editor Simon Underdown, 
and National Geographic Book of People of the World by editors Wade Davis, K. David Harrison, and Katherine Herbert Howe. Thank you all for watching. Join us next time when we dig deep into the discipline of archaeology. See you later, hominids.